Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the webinar, Accessible Ontario, the Year Ahead for School Boards. Uh, I'm Frank Kelly, and on behalf of the uh, Council of Ontario Directors of Education and the Ontario Education Services Corporation, I'd like to welcome all of you to this webinar on accessibility. As we deepen a, a culture of inclusion across our school system, an awareness of what accessibility is is a big part of that process. The integrated accessibility regulation places expectations on school boards as early as January of 2013 with regard to creating accessibility policies, plans, and procedures. It also has significant expectations regarding employee training. We know a lot of great work is already going on out there in our schools, and we are pleased to bring you these highlights today at your fingertips to help you in that work. I'd like now to introduce uh, Melanie, Project Coordinator of the Teachable Project, a key resource for school boards. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the webinar. Good afternoon, everybody. In this webinar, we plan to offer you a brief overview of accessibility in Ontario and of the integrated accessibility standards. We will talk as well about the implications for school boards. The Teachable Project is a website housing training and professional development tools for schools, school boards, and individual classroom-based staff to ensure that all educators are able to integrate accessibility awareness into their program delivery and instruction as required by the regulation. Specific resources located on the Teachable website, as well as other resources available to support boards as they implement this training, will be discussed in detail in later slides in this PowerPoint presentation. The Accessibility for Ontarians with Disabilities Act was introduced in 2005 with the goal of making Ontario an accessible society for people with disabilities within a span of 20 years. Unlike a lot of other legislation, it is not complaints driven and is structured to promote progressive and proactive efforts towards full accessibility on the part of all organizations in the province. These are some statistics that point to the fact that the issue of disability is a growing phenomenon in our society and touches all of us at some time in our lives. As you know, the definition of disability in the Ontario Human Rights Code is very broad, covering visible and invisible disabilities, temporary and permanent disabilities. This further reinforces our need to factor this into our thinking in our professional and personal lives. Addressing the whole spectrum of accessibility means looking at all the barriers faced by people with disabilities. We tend to think first of disabilities that affect mobility or sight or hearing and how accessibility entails ramps or TTY telephones. But as you know, there are other barriers that can be even greater and they arise from our openness and preparedness to find alternative ways to ensure that people feel and are included and valued. Awareness is a big piece of this and we are hopeful that exchanges such as this are a strong step in that direction. The accessibility legislation seeks to break down barriers through clear accessibility standards. You will recall that back in 2009, we dealt with the first accessibility standard, customer service. This was very much about awareness building. In July 2011, the next three standards were put into regulation. These are information and communication, employment, and transportation. They contain much more concrete de detail than we found in customer service, and we will go into key aspects of that in later slides. Laying the groundwork for action arising out of the three standards I mentioned is a requirement that we have a policy statement, practices, and procedures similar to those we developed for customer service. 
We have worked with a group of school boards in the province to develop samples of these, and they are posted on the OESC CSAO website. A later slide will confirm the website for you. Also on that website is an example of a multi-year accessibility plan. You have already had the experience of developing annual accessibility plans to comply with the 2001 Ontarians with Disabilities Act. This new requirement under the AODA will soon supersede the 2001 requirement. In fact, your ODA annual plan can be blended into your first multi-year plan, which is due in January 2013. A key aspect of the regulation is training. By 2013, boards are required to provide training for all educators on accessibility awareness and program delivery and instruction. OESC obtained funding from the provincial government to help with that, and we developed the Teachable Project. The intended purpose and content of the Teachable Project is as a go-to site for boards, schools and teachers for information, training and professional development to meet this requirement. In terms of more general training, by 2014, boards are responsible for training all staff and volunteers on the accessibility standards. All staff, including teachers, must also receive training on the Ontario Human Rights Code regarding disabilities. There are web-based resources to help with this, and we will give you those links later in this webinar. While the language of the regulation focuses on training for educators, the spirit of the legislation is to establish and nurture a climate of accessibility in Ontario's classrooms and schools, and by extension, in our communities. You will see in the Teachable Project website how we have incorporated both the letter and the spirit of the legislation. In our many discussions with the Accessibility Directorate over the last year and more, we have flagged the compliance date of 2013 January as a challenging timeline. We have made Directorate staff aware of the complexities of the school board professional development calendars and, most recently, the implications of current labour conditions. When we did customer service, the reporting date occurred sometime after the compliance date, which allowed boards that were still working on their training time to complete it. We expect similar consideration with regard to reporting on these standards. It is important, however, that boards and schools incorporate this professional learning into their PD planning as soon as possible. As was the case with customer service training, Boards are responsible for tracking the training using their usual tracking mechanisms. This means keeping a record of the numbers of individuals who were trained and the dates of training. The government's compliance reporting required employers to respond yes or no to a question about whether employees have been trained. They were not required to submit documentation, but were expected to have it on file in their organization. The lessons, training, and professional development tools in the Teachable Project were developed by Ontario teachers and other classroom staff representing school boards from across the province. Materials and tools were vetted by an advisory committee with the involvement of all four publicly funded school systems, teachers' federations, and education stakeholders. Resources for classroom staff located on the Teachable Project website include videos, lessons for English, core French, French immersion and French first language classes at various grade levels, training and PD activities, suggested formats for training and resources to enrich and supplement training, links to other resources related to the topic of accessibility awareness and accessible instruction. We have listed a number of policy initiatives and other sources that informed our work. We believe that you will find the resources and lessons in the Teachable Project reflect your existing board and school improvement goals and other initiatives. 
Accessibility messages connect the professional development to the content of the lessons. A key feature of the professional development is what we have called accessibility continuums. This is a tool which will assist participants, groups, or individuals to reflect upon their own understandings of barriers to accessibility. The accessibility continuums address virtually every aspect of classroom and school life. The accessibility messages are also the big ideas referenced in the model lessons. All of the lessons are aligned with relevant ministry documents and curricula. Lessons also model subject integration and innovative teaching approaches. Some of the lessons would serve as excellent starting points for discussions about friendship, empathy, bullying, or mental health. We'd like to show you now a brief video clip about the Teachable Project. It will give you an overview of the Teachable website. Schools lead the way in character education, equity and inclusion, safe and caring environments, which are important supports for student achievement. Accessibility is also a vital part of this student success continuum. That is why we have involved board staff, students and community in a transformative initiative to make Ontario fully accessible by 2025. This video is a sneak peek of the Teachable Project website. The project is a remarkable collaboration of Ontario's four school systems, teacher federations, program superintendents, students, and other community members. In the same way that OESC provided resources for AODA customer service in 2009, the teachableproject.org will be the go-to resource for classroom staff and boards as we keep pace with Ontario's accessibility legislation. Starting September 2012, the Teachable Project site will offer accessibility training for classroom staff and provide ongoing support. We've been working on creating lesson plans for classroom teachers uh, that address specifically uh, the issue of accessibility. The bottom line to this, and part of the whole thing that I got involved with the project, is that we need to normalize it. If we don't start with the students in the classroom, um, it's not going to go anywhere. So how can we um, support teachers in teaching the information they need to teach, but also include underlying beliefs and um, concepts about accessibility in a natural way? But for the teachers, I think we need to give them the tools that help them feel comfortable more quickly. We know we have to um, differentiate our instruction. We know we have to use our best teaching practices and maximize the technology that is available to us. Here's how we've organized the teachableproject.org for you. There are four main hubs. Introduction offers a collegial greeting from the Lieutenant Governor, the Honorable David Onley. His honor also offers a personal and inspiring view on how accessibility changes lives. You'll find information on the accessibility legislation and a professional learning tool we call Accessibility Continuum. This series of self-reflections will build awareness and inspire conversations about accessibility in the board, school, and classroom. The Lesson Plan Hub offers lesson plans for a range of grades. They can be read online and downloaded. The Accessibility Plus Hub offers links to highly regarded sites and backgrounders on accessibility issues. We know you'll consider the Teachable Project a valuable resource that supports the work of school boards. Come September 2012, you'll want to visit the Teachable Project beta site and start planning PD sessions in your board. The full version of the Teachable Project site will be ready January 1, 2013. Meanwhile, we invite everyone in the educational community to keep the conversation going. Visit the teachableproject.org or contact us by email. We are confident that through initiatives like this, we can achieve a fully accessible Ontario by 2025. We invite you to use the Teachable Project to strengthen the connections between accessibility and student success and build a better place for all Ontarians. In the video clip, 
you have seen the different hubs on the Teachable website. The Teachable project website is now in a staging phase but will be fully loaded by January 1, 2013. In the Access to Success Hub, you will find the accessibility continuums we spoke of earlier and suggested formats for training and professional development, including half day, full day, lunch and learn, staff meeting sessions for large groups, small groups, or individuals with examples of possible workshop activities. The core module includes information on accessibility awareness and an activity to promote self-reflection. In the Model Lesson Plans Hub, once the website is fully active, there will be 21 lessons, seven for English classes, one for core French, six for French immersion, and seven for French first language. These lessons are currently being field tested. In the meantime, three lessons are featured in the Model Lesson Plans Hub, two on the English side of the site and one on the French side of the site. The Teachable Project Model lessons are designed to be used as is or as examples of ways to integrate accessibility awareness into lessons. In the Accessibility Plus Hub, you will find a list of resources to support the training and implementation including web links, community organizations, literature for children and adolescents, books and articles for teachers, parents, and other stakeholders. The full richness of the project will be apparent at the school level when teachers will have the greatest opportunities to develop a deep understanding of accessibility through embedded professional development in collaboration with their colleagues. Please browse the Teachable Project website to see other features and tools that may be of interest to you as you continue to develop your implementation and training plans. The compliance date for general training for all staff, volunteers, and others who provide goods and services on behalf of the board is January 2014. The general training is intended to increase the level of awareness about what is required under the accessibility standards, what changes they entail for us in how we provide information, how we plan for offering accessible communications, what is expected for websites, encouraging employment of people with disabilities and making accommodations in the workplace, and accessibility in student transportation. It includes as well awareness of provisions of the Ontario Human Rights Code in relation to people with disabilities. When we were talking about training of classroom staff, we said that boards are responsible for tracking the training, which means keeping a record of the numbers of individuals who were trained and the dates of training. This also applies to keeping records of the general training that has been undertaken. We have noted on this slide two websites where there are resources that cover this general training. You will find that the Access Forward site and the Human Rights Commission site have excellent modules that you can easily incorporate in your training plans. These were developed for the Accessibility Directorate and the Ontario Human Rights Commission by Curriculum Services Canada, who were our partners in developing accessible customer service training. I'm now going to give you a little more detail on the specific requirements in the Integrated Accessibility Standards Regulation. The Accessibility Directorate has created a comprehensive implementation guide to the regulation and will give you a link to the Ministry site where you can find it. You will find that this guide explains what is intended by each provision and gives some implementation examples. The Information and Communication Standard covers a lot of areas and has specific requirements for the education sector. The next three slides show that school boards are required to provide accessible formats for such things as educational resources and materials, information about the board's educational programs, and student records. With regard to educational resources and materials, this is something that happens now in school boards. For example, 
in dealing with how to meet a student's needs as an IEP is being developed. In terms of other program information and student records, the key is to have a plan for how to access and provide alternative formats in a timely manner when a person with a disability requests them. Although the main focus of this webinar is to deal with the year ahead, we felt we should also address future requirements so that we can plan for them. This requirement refers to the general publications and information processes of the board and has a compliance timeline of 2015. As we have said, the key is to have a plan for how to access and provide alternative formats in a timely manner when a person with a disability requests them. Accessible formats can involve braille, audio, large print, accessible electronic formats such as HTML or Word, captioning, and so on. It can be as simple as exchanging handwritten notes. You will see that the accessible format is to be provided in a timely way and should not entail any greater cost to the individual making the request. There is a requirement as well to consult with the person making the request to determine what formats suit their needs. Organizations have the flexibility to decide on the most appropriate accessible format given the needs and the organization's ability to deliver. This requirement applies to new websites first and then leading up to 2021 all websites. Your IT staff will be familiar with this. WCAG refers to Web Content Accessibility Guidelines, which represent a common international standard. Level A and Level AA refer to a series of technical checkpoints that make websites and their content increasingly accessible to a broader range of users with disabilities. You will find greater detail on this when you consult the Accessibility Directorate's implementation guide that we referred to earlier. The government's website also has resources that help organizations plan for developing accessible websites. There are free websites such as A-Checker that you can use to check on the level of accessibility of your website. Although the requirement for Level A accessibility for new websites has a timeline of 2014, it is important that new web content created after January 2012 be accessible. Schools will have a great deal of experience with accommodating the needs of students with disabilities. However, this requirement for school libraries is very important to be aware of in planning acquisition of new library resources. Suggestions for providing accessible formats include engaging in interlibrary loans. These kinds of obligations apply as well to publishers of educational materials and textbooks, although the compliance deadline for them lags by one year. The Ontario Human Rights Code has very clear provisions for accommodating the needs of people with disabilities in employment. Again, school boards have a great deal of experience with this and have been at the forefront of equitable employment practices. By proactively removing barriers across the employment life cycle, employers can help to create workplaces that are accessible, not just physically, but in terms of opportunity and which allow employees to reach their full potential. This is a two-way street and creates a situation where employers can tap into the full richness and potential of their workforce. The details that are found in the regulation with regard to the Accessible Employment Standard are shown on the next two slides and cover such matters as recruitment and selection, for example, how we plan interviews, accessible formats for employees, individual accommodation plans, emergency information, return to work, performance management, career development, and redeployment. Boards will already have many processes in place that cover these issues, 
and will need to review them to see if specific pieces need to be updated. You will see that the compliance date for accessible student transportation is essentially the same as the date on which the integrated accessibility standards were filed. This is recognition of the prevailing practice among school boards where there is a variety of transportation approaches that are engaged to meet the needs of students with disabilities. A new requirement involves the development of individual transportation plans for students with disabilities. The kind of information needed for the individual plan is currently documented by boards in the processes used in planning between special education services staff and transportation consortia. It will be important to consult with parents or guardians as individual plans are developed and it will be important to ensure that everyone who has a part to play in the arrival, departure and transfer of the student is clear about their responsibilities. We referred earlier to examples of procedures that are on the OESC Say SAO website and you will find information there related to student transportation. As we mentioned in earlier slides, there are resources that will help organizations with most, if not all, of implementation of this regulation. In terms of policy, procedures, and accessibility plans, there are examples of these on the OESC website. In terms of training, you will find supports, materials, formats, and guidance for the training of classroom staff on the Teachable Project website. For general training of all staff, the Access Forward site and the Human Rights Commission site have excellent modules developed by Curriculum Services Canada that you can easily incorporate in your training plans. Finally, at the link we have given you for the Ministry of Community and Social Services, you will find a host of resources. In particular, there is a comprehensive guide to implementation of the regulation, which we highly recommend. If we have not answered your questions through the information we have presented, we will be pleased to put together a Q&A based on your questions, which can be shared with all participants. Thank you, Melanie. Uh, on behalf of CSD, I would like to thank our presenters, Susan Cook and Melanie Tate and Frank. Uh, for their presentation today, as well as all the participants. Please note, as Melanie said, a Q&A sheet with all the questions that were not answered today will be sent out to everyone after this webinar. Thank you and have a great day.